church. And honestly, this is kind of funny because Rob doesn't intimidate me at all anymore. I mean, I mean, look at him. But he he <laughs> and, don't don't touch me. Like, get away from me, dude. That was uh, so weird. But- Hi, Cody. Hi, Rob. So good to see you, dude. Hey, where are we? Uh, we're. We addressed that in the last episode. The episode's like a different day. It is a different day, but we're in the same location. It is a little bit darker. We're on my patio right now. We're looking at my ducks and chickens. That because it's a whole food. entire new day from the last time that we... It is a new day. We, we didn't just change t-shirts or that, anything. Yeah. We don't just do something <laughs> silly like that. Yeah. We would never do that. Hey, you <clears throat> were looking for a church. You moved yeah. from... Uh, Bay Area to the Central Valley, California. Beautiful and Central Valley. When you got here, you had to look for um, a church. Yes. What was what was the process for you? Yeah, in looking for a church. So before I before I go into that, I would say that I wish that I would have been mature enough as a Christian to have found that church before I moved to Valley Springs. And that's not something that we did. I think that's something that's really important. If you're going to move, obviously our life. Should be built by the Bible. We should be in a local uh, local you church. Be Bible built. Exactly. Thank you. Those were the words that I was thinking of. Um, so, if you're going to move, you should find a good church first because that is the center. That should be the center of your life. Your life should revolve around that. Pause. Everyone's leaving California. Yeah. And they're and I to- guarantee you, they're not. Some people are. Some people are. A friend from our church totally searched out a place in Idaho. They found a church. Found yep. a church first, and then. Decided to go there. Well, they, I think obviously you're scoping out of town. So, oh, we kind of want to live here. Let's find a church first to confirm that that would be a good place for us to go to. We had some other friends move to Washington. They searched out a church before they went there. Yeah. That was the right thing to do. Um, I don't know that everyone does that. Yeah. I don't think they do. And and obviously, like, you're not a horrible Christian if you don't do that. But I think we need to be aware of those kinds of things. So that's something that you should do. Now, skipping to when I moved to Valley Springs, it was during COVID still, so a lot of churches were shut down, so a lot of them were doing worship on Facebook. That's interesting. Yeah, worship with us on Facebook, which we've already talked about that in our church episode. So watch this episode. I'm going to put our church episode right here so they can click on it when I'm saying this right now. Right here? Yeah, or over my left. Right over here. Yeah, right there. Um, So I I knew that I wanted to find a church that had a pastor that spoke from the word of God, that spoke from scripture, that was using scripture as his authority to being up there in the pulpit and was not just up there talking about his life, talking about his experiences and telling stories. That was the biggest thing. I wanted the pastor to have a Bible up there with him because I've been to churches where the the pastor doesn't even have a Bible up there with him. And I think that's a complete shame and disgrace for a pastor not to even have a Bible in the pulpit with them. I just, it blows my mind thinking about that. Like, and, and that's what you see in American churches nowadays, I, dude. I, I just listened to, um, a, a guy. Uh, was his and, and, Cody? And, no, I listened to, oh. the, he's a pastor of a church and he came and spoke at this thing and he pulls his Bible out and he's going, his whole message is about the inerrancy and the authority and the sufficiency of scripture. Mm-hmm. He doesn't actually open his Bible and read from it once. He he kind of narrates a couple of stories. His points were all great. Right? Yeah. But it's like, we stand on the word of God. And he doesn't but, even and he doesn't but, even open it. Open it and say, like, hey, let's look at this passage and figure out what's going on here. It yeah. was I mean, it was like no trust in the word of God, yet his whole message was about the word of God. Yeah. So I think you're right. It's very common. Yeah. So I mean, that is the point of a pastor to preach from the word of God. You are, you're another man. You've been um, blessed ideally with teaching capabilities, which is why God blessed us with teachers and pastors, but you should be preaching from the word of God. We don't care about your experiences or your stories. We want to hear the word. So that was a big thing um, for me trying to find a church. I watched um, several, several sermons online because a lot of them were shut down and they were just like, endless man men just up there talking about themselves like some of them would you you know quote a couple different verses but it was mainly just storytelling 
and trying to appeal to people, and I didn't want that. And then finally I found our church. And honestly, this is kind of funny because Rob doesn't intimidate me at all anymore. I mean, I mean, look at him. But he – he and, don't, don't touch me. Like, get away from me, dude. That was uh, so weird. But, <laughs> that was really weird. Can you do a thing right now? I think it's that one. Or no, it would be this one. <laughs> he doesn't even know. Um, but I found – but I saw a sermon by Rob, and he was – preaching with authority and he was preaching from the word of God. And so I knew that's, that's the church before I even went there in person. I knew. So that's something, I mean, we can go to confession of faith. like you want to find a church where it's clear what they believe and that they're not um, spouting heresy. Yeah. So the word of God, like I, I always hear people say, Hey, it's a Bible believing church. Yeah. But what does that exactly? Cause, cause mean? nowadays that can mean numerous things. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think people might say that Joel Osteen is a Bible believing church. Yeah, uh, because he'll wrong. he'll it's not. Yeah, but he'll but he'll mention he'll say Jesus' name. Right. So, so oh, it's a, it's a church. It's how, how is the word of God handled? Is it actually exposited in that someone is taking the, a passage of scripture, they're <clears> explaining <throat> what it means verse by and, verse. Yeah, they're, expository they're preaching. It. Um, and and for me, I, I it's not so much a matter of like that you're looking for the greatest preacher. You're looking for a man with humility uh, is teaching the word of God in the power of the spirit. Yeah. Um, scripture speaks for itself. Scripture like this thing is powerful. So yeah, you don't have to have some crazy, you know, a John MacArthur up there, you know, like the best preacher around, but you want someone who's being faithful and who's reading the word of God. That's right. The other thing is that when you're looking for uh, a, a church that's a faithful church, you mentioned a confession of faith. Yeah. Confession of faith is super important. It's kind of like the word, though. Uh, you could a lot of churches may have a good statement of faith, mm-hmm. like if you, if it's a say a Presbyterian church, they're they're likely going to have the Westminster uh, Confession of Faith. Yeah, that's a great confession of faith if you if you're Presbyterian. For us, you know, I would look at the London Confession of Faith, uh, the 1689, because we're Baptist. Yeah, but uh, you, you would not only want them to have that confession of faith, but they actually believe the contents of it. And then it actually comes through in their sermons. Cause yep. you could put a confession of faith up there and then get there. And I've experienced that. And then you're like, Oh, like that's nothing. You like, really don't believe that. Yeah. You don't believe that. And it's not, it's not coming out in your teaching, which. Right. So, so a confession of faith is a big thing. Um, worship. Worship. Yeah. Worship. So like, guitars and like keyboards and smoke well that's one thing we don't have smoke in our church well here's the thing i want to just make a distinction is and i think this is this is so important because a lot of times when people are talking about worship they're talking about the music and that's only one element of worship the preaching the reading of scripture the congregational prayer um uh, of greeting one another in songs and hymns this is actual, all parts of that are worship, the, yeah. the service of uh, the Lord's table, baptism. Mm-hmm. This is all part of a worship service. And let's get something right about worship. Who is worship for? It's for glorifying God. It's to glorify it's God. It's to glorify God. So are you trying to find a church that has a very entertaining band that you like the music and it's something that you could get into and it makes you feel good about yourself? Because that's, that's not the point of worship. I've been... A, my, the church growing up that I grew up in, um, they had a huge band. They had multiple guitar players. They had all that fancy stuff. But that's not – you're not going to church to be entertained. It's not for right. us. It's to glorify God. Does God – I mean, they used to – they would sing hymns with no instruments back in the day, and we see, we think that's old, you know. I've, but it's I've not had, about the instruments. It's, it's not about me. Now, like, I, I've had actual people – leave churches that that i've pastored because i i mean and they've literally told me this you don't entertain me enough yeah and that's such a shameful i mean i think that's so shameful to to say say that actually for me to yeah to say that to i mean mean, but it's like right well i'm sorry you thought i was here to entertain you you know yeah and um i don't i don't mean to throw anyone under the bus but I don't either, but I mean... It is it is a wrong way to look at church as like, what can I get out of this? Yeah. Rather than people coming to a church and saying, okay, here's a church that truly handles the Word of God. They take a right order of worship that is regulated by Scripture. They have a sound statement of faith. Yeah. How, how can I now help this church and be a part of this church and yeah. pray for the pastor, the elders... 
and and help those people in my community. That's rarely how people approach a church. Usually, the ch- they're they're looking at the church of like, what can I get? What can from I get this? out of this? Like, oh, maybe I'll meet some friends through this. And the whole fellowship that's that's obviously a benefit. You're you're <laughs> gathering with the church with other Christians. So that is inevitable going to be a blessing Super to meet important. people. But is that your priority? Like, is that why you go to church on Sundays to get together with your friends or to meet people? Cause you're new in a community. Yeah. And that shouldn't the be the, 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 the most important thing that you're seeking. If someone truly believes this is the word of God and that God has created the human soul, he is the author of life. And someone goes to church and says, I, I'm going to go to a church that handles the word of God guess what? They're going to get far more yeah. from that than they could get from all of the programs and entertainment in the world. They will get far more from the Word of God than any of those things. And and what they will get from those things actually will leave them empty inside. Yeah. So is it important to pick the right church? Yeah. Absolutely. Now, can people have standards way too high and walk away from a church that's a good church and maybe has a few issues here or there that they, they're, they're working on and they're aware of, I think someone could walk away from a good church because uh, it's not meeting every single little detail yeah. criteria, and they're never going to find that church. And no, I mean, the churches are operated by man, and we're all sinners, even if we are in Christ, we're... we're um, we're fallible, so it's not going to be perfect. You are very fallible. You're very fallible, too. <laughs> if they wa- if they watch the last episode, they're going to know. Right? So those are just those are a few things that you should look for. You should go to a church that has a faithful pastor that is preaching from the Word of God and isn't just up there sharing his experiences or his stories who really thinks highly of himself. Worship should be about glorifying God. The hymns that you sh- that you sing should be rich in theology. They should be instructive. They should be instructive. We should sing to instruct and to praise. Um, I think like when we have the, some of those praise choruses that some some I mean honestly sound like just rereading a psalm. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I think those are yeah. those are fine. I think though that they need to be accompanied with uh, rich theology um, that instructs what our praise is. Absolutely. So. If you're new and looking for a church, uh, try to just keep some of those things in mind because I think it's really important. I think for a new Christian, um, you can kind of stumble into a a heretical church, and it could take you a long time. Did you say heretical? No, I said <laughs> a church that is full of heresy. I didn't say what you thought that I said. It sounded and like it could you be said hard heretical. as a new Christian. It could be hard to get yourself out of that, and a lot of times you just conform to that, and then unfortunately. Um, you could be led astray, and, and obviously we don't want that. Because like you said, these big churches, like a Joel Osteen church, they are full of lost people that are looking for something. They're, they're, they're looking they for are. something, and so they, they go there, and they're told by this man that they're good, that they have good hearts, that they might mess up sometimes, but God loves them, and you could do better. This is your message to get you through the week. You know what's funny, man, is you're nailing it right now. I mean, you're nailing that. <laughs> I know, dude. Well, like, I'm, just uh, like I'm, I'm not that into no. it. It's funny. There's like mean? a playbook for a lot of these guys, and and that playbook often goes something like this: is like, hey, uh, you need to get through this week. You're having your struggles. If yeah. you if you follow me through this message. You're going to reach a breakthrough, and I promise you do these things, you're going to have a breakthrough. It's motivational speaking. It's you're motivational you're speaking. motivating people to get through the week and to feel good about their lives when really you need to preach You need to preach Christ to them. You're fallen, you're, you're a sinner, and you're here because of your sin, and you need a Savior. You need to be saved. And so... And they can't be heretical. I didn't say that. We could play it back. We, I didn't say that. So yeah. All right. Hope you guys enjoyed this. 